Facebook and we got the webinar going. I've got my co-host, my friend Randy from Atlanta. Yes, sir. Don't get angry at him. He likes the Hawks and the Falcons. It's okay. <laughs> it's a it's a sad life. <laughs> it's a sad life. So one of us has to do it though. That's right, man. I'm <laughs> glad it's you. And today <laughs> we've got Brian Short, who is a chime partner. Also a great overall guy, very smart. We're going to go into Google PPC. Brian, welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. I just want to say thank, thank you first to uh, everybody at Chime and all the people I, I trust in that are really just well, helping other agents in a massive way. Like, I mean, a lot of people don't, don't recognize when they get on Facebook or float around. Like, there's no reason Tristan has to do any of this stuff. Like he doesn't have to like give you brain food and like help you <laughs> grow your business. <laughs> and people, I feel like people sometimes take it for granted. Like Facebook is such a good environment for sharing and learning. But if it comes with a sense of um, like entitlement or blame shifting, that's when it goes south. True, man. That's so Absolutely. true. Right? There's like just, just mountains of things that you can learn. But I find out of all the things that truly change your life, it's the ones that you ruthlessly implement. Ooh, it's not perfect, right? It's, it's not like mentally consuming 37 ideas. It's just being really strategic and tactful with like one or two. That's very true, man, which goes into what we're going to talk about today, which is Google PPC. And, you know, on that Facebook community thing, before we start, uh, Randy and I and the whole Chime team are really trying to do a better job with the community inside of Facebook because we're, we're trying to steer it into a more positive environment. So this is why we're bringing in people like you to just showcase them and, and just dictate where we want to go as a company, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of it comes out to leveraging the tool that already exists. And Chime is so deep. I mean, and, and this is no offense to the, the, you know, the company that made it, but I mean, it's, it's almost like you take apart your iPhone, you know, like the iPhone works if you just like, don't mess with it. But if you get inside with it and like break the whole thing, then you're suddenly like, my iPhone doesn't work. And it's like, man, you, you shouldn't have taken it apart. Like it was fine when you got it. <laughs> like you run probably some shouldn't have tried to replace the battery yourself. You, yeah, you might have not want to do that. So I yeah. thought today we would go over just a lot of the nuts and bolts of Issues that I see when people are running campaigns, whether they're running them on their, uh, on their own, uh, through a manager, how to plan, how to structure, a lot of people fail in the planning stage and they have no idea. Like they didn't even know. That's very true, man. Like very they true. had no clue. So can you do a quick intro as to who you are, a little bit of your history and how you got into PPC? Because now you're like deep in it. Yeah, yeah. So to, to have the honor of saying I have been in real estate marketing since third grade is true. And I know that might blow some of your minds. You might be like, what, like, how's this dude even what third grade? <laughs> so for 25 years, my parents ran, ran uh, the real estate book franchise. So publishing the digest size magazines. So I was like the child laborer coloring in the builder's renditions of new construction drawings when these were like by pencil. Amazing. So I have mm. literally like in, in the photography realm, right? I've clogged like three terabytes of hard drives. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, photo shoots of properties, right? So I've sold since 2006. I've been licensed in Idaho, Washington, and now Nevada. I have essentially hung up, um, you know, sales. I haven't been selling since the media buying business has grown so large. Uh, but I've run everything. I've run as a single agent at normal prices, uh, luxury prices, husband, wife team, uh, essentially like the marketing manager of a small mega team. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at scaling small and medium sized budgets. Okay. Like I got my wife doing a deal a week by her third year. That was with no VA, no assistant, no buyer's agent, no TC, no transaction coordinator, just straight raw lead flow. And if then this, that data sets of like, when people call, say this, when people order this and this, when you have this come up, do this, 
just I'm really good with like standard operating procedures and predictabilities and like probability analysis. So now in my realm, it's it's basically the business is is, is largely focused on PPC as the traffic source. Like that's where the capital deployment happens. And for people listening, let's just make a quick uh, definition. So typically when you're getting out your credit card to buy ads, you've got a split decision the second you do that. So you're either buying display, which would be like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google Display Network. In those markets, you're paying per click. So the acronym of PPC is still accurate, but the more accurate would, way to say it would be display, right? So if, if Tristan's going after just generally 50,000 people in his area, he's hoping that the you know pretty image of the property would draw somebody in. But those people seeing the pretty image of the property on Facebook, we're not expecting to see a real estate ad in that moment, right? Commonly, when you hear agents refer to PPC, again, pay per click, not paper, like means <laughs> of paper. Well, some people say that. They, they say it so quick, they say pay per click. And it's like, it's okay. It doesn't matter either way. We get, we get your intent. That's a good one, but, dude. I didn't but think basically, in the, in, the, in the realm of search campaigns, that's where I de deploy most of my budget. So for client accounts, I'm managing over $300,000 a month. In Damn, volume. man. So I'm cranking it and keep in mind, some of these people are running at 30, 40, 50 cents a click. So it's like a boatload of volume chopped Wait, up. I have a question. This is my, sure. this is for me personally. I'm being selfish here. It's okay. Tristan time. Um, Tristan time. What does, that look like? <laughs> what does that look like in a luxury market? Let's say I wanted to say, Hey, Brian, I'm going to hire you for Malibu. Yeah. What does that look like? So this is going to sound odd. Um, and I don't mean any, uh, I'm not trying to dissuade people in plain Jane markets, but people in luxury markets have it way easier. Way easier. You hear that, everybody? That's what I've been saying for oh 12 my God. years. No, my, my, my cost per click and cost per lead in Aspen is not much different than Mississippi. It's, it's so not. Good. And the yeah. ROI. The ROI oh my God. Is oh, it's yeah, it can be crazy. The, the higher, the better. I mean, in general, the, the higher, the better. Um, but let me just finish kind of the, the thought process, because I think this might help kind of understand or have people understand like why I do what I do. So since I've grown individual production, agent production, um, I had a model that started in basically 2012 where I would go to an agent and say, look, I can explode your marketing. I can help your business. Just give it to me. Like, let me take it over. I'll take over photos, direct mail, your house list, your social, your PPC. Like, just give me all that. I'm going to take a quarter of everything that you earn. And I would take an agent from five, six, seven listings to 20, 30, 40 listings inside of 12 months. Damn. Now, in doing that, what I've learned is that that is really, really hard to scale nationwide. When I can go to the bookkeeping department in my office and say, all right, like, let me see all agents X sales. That's really easy to track. Right. Try rolling that out nationwide. And it's like, uh, 35,000 leads a month times who actually bought and sold. There's no way to do it. So for clients that hire me, essentially the way that, that it works is I'm like a flat rate, uh, like you're renting my brain at a flat rate to carry out like thousands of micro sequences that you probably have no idea that exist, nor want to know about. I don't want to know right? about it. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, that, I think a lot of people don't. So anyway, that's kind of how the business started. I've been essentially in real estate marketing, like essentially my whole life. I found that search is largely the most reliable thing to set up mm -hmm. in, in terms of prob probabilities of success in getting profit out of it. All right. I love that. All right. So let's go into the title of this, which is how you really have 20 to 40 leads in your CRM when it shows a hundred and it's not what you think. Can we start with that? Absolutely. So let's talk a minute uh, between the, the things that we've all experienced in the shifting of the past five, 10, 20 years. How many spam calls do you think happen in a given month? Anybody want to take a guess? Really, I don't know. It's like four billion. 
Randy, you overshot it by uh, a few. Yeah, billion. yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> well, and four it four would, billion is not a bad number. It, it's four billion. Yeah. That's right. Huge. Okay. There's 8 billion people on the planet and what 330 million of them live in the U S and the U S is like number one for spam calls. So my point being answer rates are dropping, All right? Answer rates are dropping nationwide. Like when I fired up campaigns and like the first search campaign I made, I think was in 2007, I would have a 50% answer rate. I don't know anybody now that is claiming they have a 50 or 70% first call answer rate. Right now, nowadays, you're hearing eight, 10, 12, maybe 15. Some agents are even reporting 20 to 30, but that's pretty rare, right? That is pretty rare. I agree. So if you tell an agent, hey, you got 100 CRM leads, usually they're pretty quick to point out, well, some people filled in fake info. Some people didn't have real email. Some people appear to have a real email, but a hard line I can't text. I've had to have lengthy dialogue with some of the clients, especially millennials, and no offense to them, I was born in 82, so I, I barely like squeaked by as still a millennial, I think. But some of the guys that I'm talking to that are running like the ISA departments, they don't know what a hard line is. So they'll tell me, hey, these leads suck, like I can't text them, I'm getting reject messages. They don't even know that a lot of these leads, like in my lead flow, 18 to 28% is hard lines. Right. So most agents think if they have 100 leads and I say, yeah, you really have 20 to 30, they think it's contact validity. Got right. It. That's probably what you guys are thinking too, right? Well, yeah, of course. That's what we know. Right? That's As agents. That's what we normally think, right? That's what we normally think. But let me ask you it this way. So, Tristan, you have a team, right? And you probably have a listing specialist. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. And if he was going to go on an appointment, what percentage of the time would he probably double check and make sure that he's going to present in between the husband and the wife? Like he's going to pitch both of them. How many times would he double check that? Yeah. Uh, he probably would only check one time. Okay. My point being almost everybody going on a listing appointment is mentally hundred percent aware pitch both of them yeah always always right like i don't care if you just study marketing from buffini to ferry to anybody else right that is like mission critical yeah so now ask yourself this question so and maybe you can ballpark me on this on your numbers i know my own numbers were about eight percent what percentage of people did you sell houses to that had no significant other so meaning solo people so no significant other, no husband, wife, girlfriend. Dude, um, I'd have to say around 15%. Okay. So I was at eight. So you're a little higher. Well, Randy, in, you want to take a stab LA. at it? I'm in LA too. So it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, 11%. 11%. Okay. I see James say less than 5%. All That's right. Probably right. So now how many CRM leads do you think you actually have? CRM leads. All right. So what I'm saying is you're, you know, to go to listing appointment with buyer and seller, right? You're yeah. like, okay, I'm going to go pitch Gary and you know, Samantha. Yeah. Your CRM is what it's one-sided. Mm, it's like so the husband and the wife don't share the text. They don't share the email. So mm -hmm. if you want to increase your close rates, like if you want to rock it to freaking double, whatever your close rate right is right now, start pitching both of them. Dude. Mm. That's something that's not talked about. It is not talked about at all. And it's like this, you can drive a dump truck through the opportunity gap <laughs> of what's happening. And it, it is just ridiculous because you'll have agents say, well, it was all going fine. I had rapport, dialogue. I knew what they're looking. And then they ghosted me. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You missed a significant other. So and how I, do you, what, are, what are you talking about? Like, no. well, in that initial conversation, how is it that you that you start asking for the the wife or the husband or the spouse or the girlfriend's information? It kind of depends on the platform. Um, and Randy might be able to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you can build in a another user into the one profile, right? Or is it going to be a different user? You'll, you'll, so you'll be able to add um, relationships. So you could add spouse, girlfriend, whatever. 
into mm -hmm. a lead profile, then I believe you, there's a setting to include the um, secondary contact or yep. the spouse for that matter in on emails. So, yep. And so I have clients with all sorts of different platforms, right? From X, Y to Z. Chime is by far one of my favorites. Like I love Chime. So I'm not trying to, you know, um, speak for every other platform under the sun or Chime. But basically the first step to any improvement in business is awareness, right? Like we've got to be mission critical aware. So usually I'll use some element of guilt. Okay. Right. So I'll say something to, let's say Tristan signs up on my site and I say, Tristan, one of the things that causes friction in a real estate search is having a split mind between you and a significant other. We can get that all tuned up on one site, one account, one message board, and you can schedule showings directly, right? Like I'm telling that. you, like we can program your significant other into this system. Like I'm allowing you to avoid friction. I'm saving your team. ass from getting your wife angry at you. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me help, help me help you. Yeah. So, and I, in today's day and world, you have to be like extremely careful with what you say about like gender or, or anything like that. So you got to kind of dance around these things. I mean, be very conscientious of the way that you do it. Be very mm, careful. Of course. Of course. But typically if you lead in with an example of another client, mm. right? Tristan, if it feels like you're getting emails from seven different agents or you log into four different portals, here's something I want to make really clear. My site updates every three minutes directly from the MLS and you can book showings directly. So if you feel like you get too many emails, just opt out of everything else and stay here inside a VIP buyer. It's the best experience around. Dude. Right? Like tell them opt out of other people's sequences. Yeah, I think that I will unenroll people in other people's sequences. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Yeah. I love it. Right. It's brutal, but it works. Hey, it doesn't. It doesn't Why cost not? you much, right? So psychology doesn't cost much. We're going to get like mega heavy into like numbers and budget planning. Mm -hmm. But just from the standpoint of the CRM leads, I want you to guys think, and again, I'm not trying to be gender biased, but after doing this long enough, the wife picks the house, the husband picks the loan and the listing agent. A hardcore math question to a female is not going to be perceived nearly as it will, will to a husband. So if I'm pitching Samantha and I say, hey, Samantha, I just finished a, a market analysis comparing some different mortgage lenders. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to forward you this X, Y, Z? Is there anyone else you want me to share with this with or explain some of the nuts and bolts? Right. So I'm hinting at, I help my clients with a financial audit so they don't get jammed by the mortgage guy. Do you want me to share this or explain it to somebody else? Mm. Dude, Randy, do you see the 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 dialogue skills that Brian is is working with here? It's it's very different than what we typically hear, which is really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, no, absolutely. It is uh, significantly more tactful and very thoughtful. It's yeah. uh, not not sloppy. Uh, very. Brian seems to be very particular with the words he's choosing to use, which is I'm I'm increasingly make... more important. Yeah. So I mean, here's a, here's a mental image that I think everybody should have in, in their head before they open up dialogue with the client. So if you submit a test lead, you're pretty much gonna hear somebody call and say, hi, Tristan, this is Brian at Keller Williams. You submitted your info on my website. I thought I'd give you a call and see if you have any questions. At which point Tristan goes, nope, I'm just looking. No, thanks, not that serious right now. Yeah. Right, okay. So imagine that that happened five times in a row and you know you're pitching time number six and all of that just happened right in a row. Like the dude got five calls like that in a row. What are you going to say when you call? Not what I just said. For the Not that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like he for just five. heard that over oh, five, right? So I'm going to say, uh, Tristan, uh, this is Brian. We met through my website. You're checking out some properties here in Red Rock Country Club. I feel kind of guilty. I don't think my assistant invited you to VIP buyer. Uh, we've got a lot of clients that are going through uh, our COVID sensitivity showings with video. So if you're not in state or you just want to go through and book a video showing, you can do that directly with me. Is that the same thing the other guy said? No. Nope. Hell no. 
Is it an offer? Yes. Does yeah. it have embedded authority that other people are actually doing it and taking me up on the offer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If you say you're just interested, do I have a way of downselling you into something else? Heck yeah. Heck yeah, dude. For sure. I do want to rip through the other stuff we have planned because if you get me on dialogue, man, I'm a machine. Yeah. Like, well, I, could, right. I could so do this go, for. Let's go uh, into budget. So okay. a lot of people are wondering how much do I spend here? Where do I start? How does that look? Okay. So in general, step one, and how much longer do we have for the whole thing? Because I can like, I we need can to go for about, we can go for about 10 more minutes. We'll go a little okay. over. All right. So in budget, there's basically three ways to set budget. The first thing you should do before you set budget is break up two credit cards. So credit card one, ideally 2% cash back. That is everything that is fixed operating expenses that you don't earn a dime on. That's your cell phone, your power bill, your internet, your MLS dues, your realtor fees, right? Your Chime site, my fee, everything that's a fixed operating expense gets put on one card. Cool. The stuff you make money on, put that on another card. I want your brain to know that when card two starts going up, that's very likely to be allowable. That's a good thing. Card one exploding is a really bad thing, right? You want card one thin and card two running hot. Okay, so, so split that up because like people that. don't have their math set up and then they freak out when they're like, oh my God, my cost tripled. I'm like, yeah, well, your net worth went up freaking 200 <laughs> grand since I met you. So don't worry about the two grand in ads. That's right. <laughs> so like, but they freak out. So the first way, I'm going to walk you through this in order of simplicity. So I've got notes because I already wrote it down. So in general, buy an hour of your time. Okay. So per day. So let's say you made 150 grand last year. You work 50 hours a week, 50 hours a week. That's 250 hours. You make 60 bucks an hour. You need to know that. If you're making 600 bucks an hour or 60 or whatever, you need to know that. Spend an hour on yourself. Buy yourself an hour. If you want to go aggressive, buy an hour, assuming that's all profit. If you want to go slow, find out your net and spend what you earn in an hour a day net. So if you have a 50%, you know, but let's say if your, your load for running business is 50%, you don't really keep 100% of what comes in the door, right? But a lot of agents keep 35, 50%. Spend based off of that. So somebody doing 150K a year, you probably want to budget between 30 and 60 bucks a day. Okay, formula two is just assume that you're as good as everybody else that's a client of mine. Don't assume you're way better. Don't assume you're way worse. My ballpark normal is 1,000% ROI. Damn. I know that sounds high, but like, honest to God, I have a 4.8% cancellation rate with my service. Are you right? counting? That's the Oh, no, it's ahead. a text message to cancel with me, right? So I set up the, the expectation of working with me for a year. That's like the mental expectation. As a technicality, you could cancel day two, right? So I'm just saying very few people cancel, obviously, because it's really profitable and I help them in a lot of ways beyond simply just sending them traffic. Um, Brian, do you, do you also work with seller leads? Because I, I got that question on the Facebook side. Is yes. it buyer leads? What does it look like when people work with you? So a lot of it's going to appear buy side. Statistically speaking, it's going to be like 20 to 40% of the buy side leads currently own in whatever county we're targeting. And then if you do want to run like a home value style campaign, we can fire that up as well. I don't do instant offer. I don't do cash offer or anything like that. Those are brutal. Those are like 250 to 500 lead. And the average person filling out a form like that has filled out three to seven other cash offer forms. All right. And to it is not a market I would get into. Brian, to work with you, what, what's the cost look like? Entry level, what does that look like? General assumption is that you're going to spend under 3000 a month, right? That's where everybody starts. My fee is 500. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending 1000, 2000, 3000, either way, my fee's fixed. Setup is 1500. That includes the first month of management. I don't have margin in your ad budget. Perfect. So when we're on tune up calls and I'm encouraging you to scale, you're not doing that for me. I'm not making more. So it's still uh, $500 a month, even if we're spending 6,000. So I quoted above 3000 to see how much market share somebody's going to take up. And I also want to know what it's like working with that client based on difficulty. If you're trying to scale a market with a huge population base, it's not that hard, but for some, like I have a client in North Dakota where he would gladly spend two, three, four grand a month. And I can only find like 800. 
There's like a hundred yep. listings in this whole county. I've seen that. Got it. So not a lot to work with. There's not a lot to work with. Do you want me to keep going on budget? There's one more way yeah, to set budget. Yeah, I'd love to get more on okay. budget. I, I think we already need a part two and three on this one. So, <laughs> Just FYI. so spending 10% of what you want to make is, is the best way, right? My average ROI is 10X. Just assume you're going to be right in the dead middle of the bell curve. You're going to, you're not going to be below. You're not going to be high. The average client reporting ROI at month 12 is at 10X. So if you're gunning for a quarter, let's say you're doing a quarter million in earnings right now, you want to add a quarter million, 10% of a quarter million is 25,000 divided by 12 months a year is two grand a month. Okay. So formula three is way more involved. Just hold on to your thinking cap here. Find out your current net worth, right? Let's say your current net worth is 500,000. Your net worth goal is 5 million, right? So you're looking for a $4.5 million shift in net worth. So that means in general, you'd have to spend 450,000 if you had 100% margin in your business, which you don't, right? So if you're an agent and you have a 33% net margin, that means you need to spend three times 450,000, which is 1.35 million. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds terrifying for an agent to say like, you're telling me I got to spend 1.3 million? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to actually do it, right? So let's say we take 15 years is the time. That's 90K a year, right? By 12 months is 7,500 a month. Sometimes the agents do not realize what they're doing is changing the amount of time they're going to have to work by decades by spending less. Right? So mm -hmm. let's talk about risk. So Randy, which sounds riskier to you? Spending 500 in budget or 50,000? 50, 50,000. Tristan? I would say the same thing because I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Right. But let's, let's do the numbers. Right. So would it be fair to say most people listening to this, a payout is going to be 10 grand. Ballpark. The, payout, the payout is going to be 10 grand off of the 500. No, uh, a conversion event, right? A conversion event in real estate ballpark is 10 grand. Sure. For the majority of clients I serve, that's kind of the normal range, right? I don't have many people gunning it, you know, $100,000 houses. Like yeah. most everybody's 350, 500 a million up, right? right. So let's say 10, 10 grand for easy math. Okay, nationwide, I'm at 10 bucks a lead, right? So that's just kind of normal, right? So with 500 bucks, you get 50 leads. With 50,000, you get 5,000. So if we define risk is having the money go out and never come back in, Mm. right? What's more likely? You can sell one out of a thousand people or you can sell two out of 50. Yep. I'll take my thousand. <laughs> okay. So you can be 10 times worse than my normal average and still break even if you spend 50K. Yeah. Okay. Now I know that's, that's a, that's a dramatic example. I'm using big numbers because it's, it's not dramatic if I just move it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Mm. Very but people don't realize the, the law of large numbers is the thing that's usually jamming them in their other events. Brian, before, before you go further, what is the link to visit? I've already gotten three requests. What's the... Oh, so the website domain is realestatetraininglabs.com. Realestatetraininglabs.com. Yep. All right. I'm going to put that into the Facebook community if you want to dump it in there. Perfect. All right, uh, Antonio, yeah, so, for you, buddy. Here you go. And uh, Michael Cook says you're amazing. He loves you. Awesome. I have some. Uh, I have some buyers agents on teams, so I don't know their name because the team owners like retain me. And I'll get a message like, "Oh my god!" Like I just, you know, I did X Y Z pitch on so and so forth and booked a showing at a million eight. Like my highest sales four fifty. Holy shit. You know, I'm like, who the I hell is it. this guy? I'm like, I don't even know who he is. It is like, oh, well, I'm a client through you, like, you know, of somebody else. So, yeah. And how do, how do people sign up? Do they just call you and then you do PayPal, credit card? What does it work like? So, yeah. So basically I like to have an intake call. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm not salesy. Like if you get on the phone with me, it is not going to be a pitch fest. There's no pressure. Like I'm really consistent with with who I want to work with and in what makes sense in general you got to be ready at least to spend 10% of what you want to earn mentally plan for a year and I know that might terrify you and that's great if it scares the hell out of you that's okay 
Like, uh, I'm not trying to be cold, but the number of agents that bail early, like aggravates me a lot. Absolutely. A lot, a lot, a lot. No, I'm, to I'm so totally I, with you. I really, and the same thing with Chime, right? You should not fire up a Chime site and be like, well, I'll give it a good three weeks. And if I get rich, great. And if not, Chime sucks. This is, you can have like a PhD in this system. <laughs> like it's, it's really involved, but if you actually put in the time, the chance that, that you can harvest on it is dramatically increased. All right. So when you set up everything, Brian, and here, I'm going to wind down right now because I have questions. Yep. When you set up our account and you're pushing in PPC leads into the system, do you also help with the automation just to set it up in Chime or is that up to us? That's up to the client. So there are definitely resources through that. I know that Brett's Chime training is great. I've got quite a few clients that have gone through that. I'm pretty sure the domain for that is Chime Premier. So if you want to learn how to run Chime, I'm not the best guy to, uh, to run that or to teach that to you. I know the basics and I've got most of my client logins so I can take a look and you know generally like install codes and things like that. Um, but if you're looking for smart plans and you're looking for um, specific workflows and that kind of stuff, that's definitely not my world. All right. Makes sense. Well, you're, you're in charge of making sure that we're getting all of the leads, right, to work with. So I'm trying to not explode my brain with too many caveats and probabilities. Like I have clients that want me to uh, write direct mail packages and write their video scripts. Uh, I used to do new construction takeovers. I used to do a bunch of things that are like infinitely more complex than running search ads. Uh, but I'm, I'm the core of my business is a really, really good search media buy in the front end. And then a hell of a lot of sales choreography, consulting, pitch scripts, offers, math-based decision-making workflows, and like getting your, uh, largely your, your buyer's agent or your secretary being like super productive with their time inside of the CRM. So they're not unclear as to what to do. All right. And then here, James says, Chime automatically does pretty solid. He says he adds a lot of Brett stuff and just the AI alone does amazing, so. Yep, yep. I think uh, the way that we need to look at the next five to 10 years of, of marketing is gonna be a lot less beat them over the head and a heck of a lot more kill them with value. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it's shifted to, man. And a lot of agents don't fully understand that that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. right? which is an advantage to the people that are doing it that way. So that's why I loved your, your dialogue at the beginning. It's, it's almost instructing me what to do in a very uh, valuable kind approach. We have to get into their heads so they see us as an asset, not a vulture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's bringing value because so many people are trying to tell the general public that realtors are not bringing value, right? Huh. Do you That's mean Zillow or just the general population? I just didn't, I, I, thought, <laughs> I heard well, say Zillow for a second. I yeah, I, I mean, Zillow is one of them, but there's, mm -hmm. it, we've gotten to a culture where you're guilty before proven innocent, right, as a realtor. So you have to prove them that, that, you're, that you're valuable. Yep. And um, what Bri what Brian's little intro was in that script was a was a great example of bringing value. You know what? Something Brian said too after the value, he said that depending on depending on the amount of listings in your area, you know, the budget that you want may not work. Right? Mm -hmm. You may not have enough, so you either expand or you settle for a lesser budget. Mm -hmm. But I think that that was important. Brian, I know I hit you up before, but I'm going to hit you up again. I want to do uh, Westlake Village, California. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No, you're on. You're on my list. So uh, I'm on your hit list. Good. You're Don't, on the yeah, list. Don't you forget you're on, list. on the list. <laughs> don't let me forget it. <laughs> yeah, and I think you were asking. I don't know if we were we were recording when you're asking before, but I, you asked how do we take how do we deal with like multiple clients in different areas. So um, there's lots of areas I have multiple clients. Um, Atlanta for sure. Uh, like Dallas, Miami, I basically look at the volume of what's happening and I'm not going to go sell into a market if I think that's going to tank another client account. 
So let's say if we look at a, a market and one client's like 8% of the auction and another one's 5%. Mm -hmm. It's not really that hard to add another one. No, it really right? is. But, but some of the people coming to me right now have, have budgets like quantum higher than what I'm typically accustomed to. Like two, three, four, or five grand, that's like normal. Some of the people right now are exiting Zillow and they're getting off like 20, 30, 50K. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they look at this and they're like, uh, you know, all right, well, I'll, I'll spend half. And I'm like, I'm not going to take 25 K. Like, I need to know what it's like to work with you before. <laughs> are you going to be, are you going to be crazy? Or are you going yeah, to you gonna be like up <laughs> my, yeah, yeah I, I need to know what it's like to work with somebody, but just so, so people are aware, um, well, just inside of me, Brian, would you take Randy on as a client? Randy, shoo off. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, so a lot, of, a lot of people don't don't realize this, and I'm not trying to, to throw anyone uh, under the bus, but um, a lot of a lot of other let's just put it out there, other people um, will onboard anybody with a credit card. True. Like I've talked out of working with me probably ten people this year already, whether they didn't have the money. No, but whether they didn't have the money, right? They didn't have the right mindset. They weren't willing to get a Chime site. They want me to run some hokey Wix site that they built, you know, or from WordPress. And I'm like, good God, like I need a race car. Like I will drive a race car harder than hell, but you're not going to get me a golf car and then blame me for not winning the race. Here, Brian, I here's my, it. Here's my it. WordPress site with no from, IDX. Please. From 2007 <laughs> happen. that your cousin made, <laughs> but it'll work. Made. Oh, yeah, man. it's like I don't even want to try that. I mean, here's an example. So here's a here's a feather in in Chimes cap. I have a client in Silicon Valley. He spent 25 grand on a custom WordPress site, right? So Silicon Valley labor. This is not like like backwoods people. Silicon Valley labor. Okay. When we launch. He's eating a $380 cost per lead. Right? That's brutal. We yeah. fire up Chime. It goes to eight. Went to eight bucks. He went from three eighty to eight. See, that's that's the magic of what can happen. And hold on, Brian. On that, I need to know because Randy and I get to see a lot of people onboarded on the back end, and sometimes mm -hmm. at the very beginning, maybe like two weeks, three weeks, the cost per lead is really high, but then it skyrockets down to like In, eight, twelve. For that for my accounts or for other people's accounts? For other people's account. Why is that? Okay. There's kind of a, the first three days, anytime you enter the auction, there's like a first mover advantage into the auction, but that wears out really quickly. So most of my accounts are going to be pretty consistent, irrespective of uh, length. Like in general, they get slightly better over time, but it's, it's definitely not something where you want to set the assumption that it's perpetually better. Like if I'm running an account and it's month 18, it's like, there's no way to get it to drop a buck a lead a month for 18 months straight, right? Because then we would be at, they would be paying us for leads. So there's a market rate at which you leave the auction. Um, does anybody here want me to explain how the auction works? I think people yes. have no clue. Okay. We'll just go over on time. So okay. So it's, it's, it's second highest bidder plus one cent. So let's say you're both in Atlanta. Randy's bidding 50 cents. Tristan's bidding a dollar. Most people think you would spend a dollar. Right? No. If Tristan got the click, he'd spend 51 cents. Mm. So oftentimes when you look at people's setup, they're overbidding dramatically. They're mm. wasting money. But doesn't Google on the back end tell you if you're overbidding and where you need to be? So I don't trust Google at all. Like I've I've done case studies where I've taken the advice to their ad reps and it's been like 27 times out of 31. Like I've actually recorded and done it. It's been way worse. Whoa, dude. Yeah, I don't trust Google whatsoever. Damn. I love it. Well, they're that. they're be they're they're out for their shareholders. Like they're not yeah. they're not trying to to help you. Yeah, Google's like, not in the business of saving you money. No. I mean, there are some accounts where the previous way that they're running it, they're at like 75, 85 cents a click and I'm at 12 cents. Dude. Like there's, they're just, they're overpaying, especially high-end markets. Like in Beverly Hills, um, 
I want to say in that market, I'm at like 42 cents a click. Damn. Well, and you there, also there are get people a lot of eating. People too. No, I don't mean Beverly Hills, the city. I mean like niches, like, like hyper, oh. hyper, hyper tight stuff. Ooh, damn. Yeah. The there are people, quality. there are people overpaying in that market. There are people sitting there with like Madison Avenue type agency managers. They don't want to actually build like the mechanics of the, of the account. So they just want to whack your credit card. Like, so think about an agency, let's say if an agency takes 25%, right? Mm -hmm. Why would they want to drop your cost per click? Yeah, they don't, man. No, they don't. They want you to spend more. So spend more that, as quickly as you can. On that, Brian, do you tie into the back end of Chime that shows the CPL or is that something separate that you provide? So in general, now this is going to sound crazy. And I think there's probably a whole bunch of people that don't, that don't believe me. There is no correlation between cost per lead and ROI. Freaking blows my mind. There's none. Well, oh, hallelujah. None. I love none. hearing this. I have this is people amazing. At, at three bucks a lead that are killing it. I yeah. have people at 38 bucks a lead that are killing it. I've got people drowning at five bucks a lead. They cannot convert anything. That's true. Like there's absolutely no correlation. Now I'm not saying that you want the highest cost if you can get the same human at the same I mean you want the cost down I'm not saying that you you don't want it to tilt up but the the way that agents make decisions is really really inaccurate so I try to keep my agents blind to a lot of things they can still see a ton of stuff if they just like log into analytics yeah. like they can still nerd out to their heart's content in there but the idea about 95% of the time a client of mine looks at analytics and then says hey I'm thinking about this they're wrong like whatever their interpretation is of that event, it is mechanically wrong. Right. Their assumption is just incorrect. Well, that's because remember they're, they're hearing it from other places that don't fully understand it or comprehend it either, right? So mm -hmm. largely, and I think I think there's just an adage um, in this business where everyone's kind of pitching like lower cost per lead. Mm -hmm. yeah. They we'll drop absolutely. the lead cost, we'll drop the lead cost, we'll drop it, drop it, drop it. And it's like, well, at the same time you're winding up doing that, you're increasing your number of like fake leads, you're mm -hmm. decreasing your average age and affluence, yep. and then you're throttling up on all the people who have already created accounts on 15 other sites. That's mm -hmm. true, man. That's true. And it's tough also, like I cover Malibu, so my cost per lead or my ROI is insane in comparison to somebody yeah. else. So it's, it's hard to, to correlate that with somebody else's. That's why I hate telling people, it's like, yeah, I got a $10 lead and we got a $250,000 check from it. But it, it's it, like- Look at that? ROI. I think ROI is the only thing that you need to look at, right? If, yeah. if, you're, at, if you're at a good ROI, that's fantastic. If you're not, yeah. does it really matter? what your cost per lead is like contact validity is more important. Calvin has a question here. Um, okay. Are you able to tie into the chime system just for quick visuals to see like impressions, clicks? No, you are now. All right, cool. But no, you in, can log into the back end of Google and see that anyway on their account, right? Yeah. I mean, to some degree, um, you're going to see a lot of stuff in there. Like, I mean, if you're in analytics, you can see, how many people use a Samsung versus an iPhone? I mean, you can get like nitty gritty as, as you, but like, what are you going to do with that? Are mm -hmm. you going to be like, I only sell the people with iPhones. Like, I don't really care. Like if you want to buy a house, I don't care if you have a Samsung. Like, but Here's yeah, what happens is agents, they, they, they are not successful converting the leads and so they need a scapegoat. So they need, to, they need to go see, well, this cost per lead is higher than what I heard is over here. So I'll be successful yeah. if I go get this lower cost per lead uh, because they're looking for reasons as to why they're not successful because it certainly isn't them. It's not yeah. my fault. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it, it's... <laughs> Tristan, have you ever done direct mail? I do. I still do it. Okay, so... Would you rather just have somebody throw it in the trash or call you and tell you they throw it in the trash? Oh, I would rather them just throw it in the trash. I'd rather have it, <laughs> right? I mean, sometimes you just don't want to see the data. 
don't want to know that. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to know. I don't want to see. I don't want somebody to to call me and say like, I, I'm going to send you a picture of this pine tree we cut down Although, so you could mail me your just sold pitch. I like, couldn't I don't even want to know. doing that to me. Hi, Tristan. I got your piece of crap postcard. I'm throwing it. <laughs> Hey, Sorry, Tristan, you're not even mailing me, okay? How can I throw your stuff away if you're not going to send me anything? Can, can we jump into the last one? Because I think this one's like a, yeah, a do lot it, of man. people. Okay. Don't get, don't get, don't blacklisted, get blacklisted. blacklisted. Oh, my God. This sucks. Getting blacklisted by Google sucks. Let me tell you the big ones. A dynamic redirect. So let's say my domain is homes in Vegas. Right. And I'm running some other rinky dink platform and I'm going to fire up, fire up chime site. Right. And I tell chime, all right, I'm, uh, I'm going to do homes in Vegas and then they start building it. They get the reads feed and everything. And then later at some point I decide, oh, that's not a good domain. I'm going to make it uh, homes in Summerlin. And I dynamically redirect from homes in Vegas to homes in Summerlin. And mm. you don't tell me your ad manager, you can, Honest to God, get blacklisted for that. Like you can make it so Google will Whoa. never take your business again. You have to, to get around it, you have to find like your cousin's credit card, fire up another site, fire up another domain. Like it is a nightmare to get around it. So if you're running traffic with me or any other provider, don't change your freaking domain at any time you're running ads. You, there's a way to do it if you pause and then rebuild it. But, but I had a client running, it was some version of like a, a zip code and then like something about Silicon Valley. So we're running it. Everything's going fine. It's rocking. Her partner doesn't like the zip code because she thinks it's too limiting. They switch the domain. They don't tell me whatsoever. Boom, account terminated. It was Whoa. like five months to get the account back. Oh my gosh. Okay. What so do not redirect off of a live domain that you're sending. Okay. That's like mission critical. Don't do that. Um, number two, um, make sure that you're, I know a lot of people are not going to have a problem with this, but follow the legal compliance in your state. There's a bunch of people in Nevada that don't have their license number in the footer. That was like mm. four years ago. They changed that. Yeah, they I don't did. care what state you're in, go through your damn license number in the footer. Get ahead of legal compliance. Don't like wait to get caught or just say like, well, I'm in XYZ state, so I don't have to do it. Just assume you need to have your logo. I'd put the address of your brokerage that substantiates things a little bit more than seeing like a fly by night company with like no physical location. Um, installing something black hat or malicious. Um, this has come up a couple of times. Now, most people don't think that this is going to happen and it's pretty rare, but there are things that you can bolt on to the back end of your site to do a lot of different stuff. So for some clients, like a client in Canada, he was you guys are familiar with like GDPR and the rules in, in Europe versus like the US? I'm not. Okay, their data protections are like way tighter than ours are. So they have all these ugly forms that pop up and say like, do you accept these cookies and blah, 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 right? Yep. He was using Tag Manager to fire an okay click matched with any other button that they click. So he was auto enrolling them into like a GDPR sequence with Tag Manager. He got his account banned. Wow. Like, so don't do anything tricky. If, if you hear of some software where you're like, oh, well, this software, we're going to install it and it's going to strip and rip all these people's IP addresses and personal information, mm -hmm. you're very likely going to be violating something. Like, you probably don't want to do that. I'm not saying that software doesn't exist or it doesn't work, but I'm just saying you probably want to be real careful with what you're doing and there's a good chance that you're going to have some significant issues if they find out. So don't do anything you're not supposed to. Um, another one is anything involved, this is crazy. This happened multiple times in Phoenix. Anything involving a keyword based on explosives or firearms. I had two accounts go down for promoting Winchester Ranch in Phoenix. Oh. Uh, right, and, it's, and it doesn't matter. You can call the Google ad rep and be like, look at the landing page. It's got a picture of a freaking subdivision in the desert. Like I'm not trying to promote firearms explosives. Didn't matter at all. Wow. Uh, another one, anybody in California and Del Rey, California? Not Del Rey, but California, yes. Okay. Well, Del Rey will get you marked for porn. Like don't run it. There's some porn star with that trademarked and like it will for sure get stopped on both Google and Microsoft. Like oh don't gosh. even fire it up. Yeah. Uh, that's happened <laughs> before. 
Um, don't mention lending or don't run clicks to any page having anything to do with financing in general. Like if it isn't a strict mortgage site, I wouldn't run clicks directly to any financing page. Huh. Uh, the trigger for that typically, it says complex or speculative financial instruments. Mm -hmm. There's a, another like thing you've got to go through uh, hoop jumping if you're going to run that kind of site. Like I couldn't fire up a site like Vanguard or Fidelity or Schwab. Like they don't just let anybody fire up a site that looks like a bank or a financial institution. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, minor ones, uh, the double serving policy. So like if I'm running your ads, do not hire somebody else to run ads at the same time, whether that's integrated with Chime or that's another agency manager. Inside of an ad account, let's say we have Tristan's ad account, right? And Tristan has waterfronthomes.com, condos.com and acreageproperties.com. Mm -hmm. We could promote all three domains inside of one ad account. You do not want to promote multiple domains from multiple ad accounts or sorry, one domain from multiple ad accounts. So like if I'm running your ads uh. and a buyer's agent on your team says, I'm going to just fire up ads and they do that on their own volition, you fall into the penalty with Google called double serving. You're basically trying to take up more auction space by using multiple ad accounts. Mm hmm Got it. Don't so just, do that. You should just be running one ad account. One ad account, one domain. One domain. Got it. Yeah, that's a big one. That comes up a lot. Um, James, yeah, those are, the, those are the most common ones. All right, good. James says, funny enough, chime.com is a bank. <laughs> <laughs> y'all would not believe how many, y'all want to get angry about support calls. We get so many support calls from people looking for Chime Bank goodness it's just terrible. ask him for the ask him for the routing number yeah i i know right oh my <laughs> goodness dude it is terrible so many people call like bro i promise you you're not looking for your real estate crm support line like no, it's not the same thing dude. brian last question for you sure from calvin what is your success for display ads uh to do, do, do i guess i would assume that i'm actually trying it um I've been successful in it, but I've never seen a reason to really run it. Uh, and I, I would assume he's talking about Google this way. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've run it, but it doesn't really make much sense. I, I don't see really why um, you're essentially going to just guarantee that your audiences are worse and you're going to eat a higher cost per lead from a less motivated person. It can be good if you have a real reason to do that. Like if you're promoting new construction or something and you really need to get some traction and like groundswell and some, some eyeballs. Behind Awareness. Something. Yeah. But in general, like, uh, yeah, I, I don't spend much on display, but I have, uh, taken a stab at it in many different markets and, uh, you know, different things, but it's, it's not something that I go for. If I was going to do display, uh, I would, I would go after video before I would just straight up, uh, image ads. All right. I love it, man. That's a lot of information. I'm getting messages that we need a part two and three to this, so. No, man, I don't know. Uh, no, no, it's good. Um, no, I feel like uh, I'm almost too detailed. Like I, I try not to be too nerd level with people, but I'm a very uh, spreadsheet thinker. If you saw my computer, you'd be like, this is like some Rain Man stuff here. It's like, <laughs> Rain, it's, hey, is that why you moved to Vegas, Brian? Oh man, I, I actually, I actually don't gamble or anything like that. I, I mean, I have, you know, one or two beers in the weekend, but I don't do much partying. I'm here for climbing and, and mountain biking and in the sun. So, oh um, man, you, you and Brett ever ride together? Yeah. I know he always, I don't know if I could keep ride. up with Brett, but I'm um, rock climbing. I could probably kick his ass. Yes. Oh, I love yes. that. You hear that Brett challenge. <laughs> I love that. That's oh, great. so good. That was good, Brian. Thanks for being on, man. Randy, that was pretty yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, thanks for everybody for putting this on and, and thank you guys for a great platform. I mean, there's, there's honestly, there's 160 ways you could do worse than Chime. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's probably 200 platforms. There's a lot of ways to do way worse, mm -hmm. very quickly. Very true, man. Very true. Well, hopefully you get some calls and people signing up because what you've got is is pretty awesome. So keep on doing what you're doing. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Thanks, Brian. Well, thanks so All much, right. Brian. See you guys. See thanks everybody. Thanks, brother. All right.